So what we have on the bench here today is a timing light. Uh, automotive use, uh, gas engines, that sort of thing. You take the uh, plug wire and you put the plug wire through this gap here and then uh, as the engine fires over uh, the flashes come out of the end here and there's a xenon tube in behind here and behind this there's a xenon tube quite bright and uh, the flashes uh, give you an indication of how your timing is in the engine when compared to the marks uh, that are on the engine someplace that uh, tell you how well you're doing with it uh, this guy has seen some better days. It's probably apparently been 10 years that uh, it's been uh, it last in use. And uh, I've already taken the old batteries out of it, so you can imagine it's uh, not, not, the, not the best down inside of there. Uh, you can see some of the green that's, that's on here. There's a little bit of it that you might be able to see, and there's a lot more of it down inside of there. And uh, we'll, we'll take it apart and have a look inside and see if it's uh, fixable and uh, go from there. So only two screws to get this thing apart. There was the one that was up here um, and there was another one down here and this this fits over here in this hole. There's a little uh, Phillips as well, as well inside of there. We can see the xenon flash tube up here and we can see the amount of water that was in this thing once upon a time. It looks like it's dried in the corners down here. Uh, this this rust and uh, the battery itself didn't explode. It's just simply been some uh, moisture in this thing for for whatever reason um, This is the switch that actually turns it on a fairly simple thing. It runs over from the battery the battery terminal here Where it's where it there it is touches right there touches on here when you close the back of it And there's a little wire that runs over here to this plate and so you push this button down right here. There's a second hole for a, se a second button, but it's not used in this model. But anyways, that uh, gives it continuity when you push this down and uh, powers the circuit up. So we've got to take all of these things apart and get the corrosion off of those. But first what I'd like to do is I'll, I'll pull this off of here and we'll have a look on the underside of the board. And we'll just, uh, it runs on two D cells, so it's a three volt circuit here so we'll we'll put uh, we'll figure out where the three volts goes and we'll put three volts to it and see if we can't get this thing to trigger somehow and at, at least start there so here's the underside of the circuit board uh, we can see that it's been worked on before I'm, I'm assuming this isn't factory it looks like it was kind of smushed on there a bit and same with some of the connections that are made on here maybe the timing light's been changed once it looks like or the uh, xenon bulb um, nonetheless, the amount of green that's in here is is not the greatest, but it doesn't look like any of the traces are actually rot, rotted through, except for possibly under here. But uh, we'll we'll take and take that apart. One of the things I'm going to do too is I'm going to take a couple of pictures just to make sure that I never uh, don't forget where the wires go. So take a few pictures before you start really taking stuff apart. Um, yeah, there's more green down in there too. Uh, see some of the, the wires down in here are pretty corroded. So anyways, we'll get this cleaned up. I'll take a toothbrush to it and uh, get some of the grunge off of there and uh, see if we can get some of that stuff unsoldered. And uh, I don't have a circuit diagram for this either, so I just might take and uh, figure out what all this stuff is. There's not really that many parts on here. Um, anyway, we'll take a look and uh, carry on. So while checking some of the circuitry out, and getting the board cleaned up we've run into our first uh, kind of big hurdle here um, this is a circuit that this is this is very simplified this whole thing is very simplified but this transformer right here is this transformer right here we're, we're trying to take three volts here and we're putting it up approaching 300 volts probably 250 or so this uh, capacitor here is rated for 300 volts so uh, the tube, the, the small xenon tube itself here needs about 250 or so volts across here and then there's a trigger pulse that's put into it to make it flash. But uh, to get that sort of voltage from um, 3 volts, you've got to have a, a step up transformer. Well, this on this side of the transformer here, um, these, these wires are very, very tiny. They're about the size of hair and uh, there's a lot of it in there, I'm sure. But because of the corrosion that we've seen here, the green and the brown everywhere, those little wires are no longer making a contact. So I, I can put my, my ohmmeter across these two, these two points here, 
I would expect something on the order of, I don't know, anywhere from 50 to a couple of hundred ohms because of the size, the tiny size of that wire. But um, I have no, no continuity between these two points right here. There should be just a, you know, like again, just a couple hundred ohms maybe. And that's these two points right here is that. So this is the oscillator circuit, three volts in, probably 250, something like that. And then it's rectified up or rectified and then stored in this little capacitor, a bigger capacitor right here. Anyways, I'm going to see if I can take this transformer and desolder it from the circuit without breaking it. And uh, maybe we can get the wraps off of this. I don't know. But if uh, if this can't be fixed, it's we're basically done. I would be surprised if I could get one of these transformers of the correct size. And there's no numbers that I can see on this thing. So uh, we'll give it a go and see if I can't uh, get some of those microfine wires out of that thing. So I managed to get the transformer out of the socket here, out of its uh, the pins out of the PC board. And I've kind of got it unwrapped here. It's wrapped in tape around the outside. These are uh, two ferrite cores here. So uh, it's not, um, not the steel because it probably runs up at around a few kilohertz at least. And uh, I took the tape off the outside, managed to get the core separated, which you have to be really careful of if you ever end up doing something like this. Um, this is ferrite, very brittle. So you can't really bend it or anything. It's, it just, it'll just snap pretty much every time and then uh, so I got that core out of the way and then I got down to the tape that was wrapped around the outside of the transformer here and unfortunately the outside of the transformer the outside windings are the primary and it's the secondary which is the very very fine windings which is what we want to get to which are underneath these guys so that option is not going to work out for just pulling off a few wraps and uh, you know extending at least one of the wires so what I have to do now is use these, you can't see it on here, but there's little tiny stubs down of the wire itself down inside of here. And uh, I got to see if I can get a piece of wire from on the pins here over to those guys and then just uh, tack them in place with some solder and see if we can get that done. And then uh, check it out for continuity. So I managed to get the transformer hooked back up again. I used a um, single strand, it's like 14 gauge here, multi-stranded, and I used a single strand here to uh, jump her across from the pins on here over to the what little stub was inside of there. I had struggled with it for quite a while until um, I used some um, soldering paste. I did not use the hot air gun because there's no room in there. So I just used the finest tip on my soldering iron that I have. So the soldering paste with uh, applied with a pin uh, seemed to work pretty good. Get a little bit of that in there and then when it finally uh, uh, grabbed on when it when the solder melted it uh, made a nice little joint inside of there anyways so you can see that the uh, uh, resistance of the secondary winding on this little transformer are about 250 ohms so it's a that's a lot of wraps of that fine fine wire so if you're ever fixing one of these things and I don't know it's certainly not worth it um, because you could replace this thing for far less than shop cost for doing a couple hours worth of work but that's not the point here. So anyway, um, let's get this thing plugged back onto the board and see if we can get this thing to oscillate and uh, generate some voltage for us into that capacitor. So you can see here that I managed to get the uh, transformer back on the board. I saved some of that tape that I had taken off of it before and there's about two or three layers of tape on here to hold that ferrite back together, that, that ferrite core. Uh, I've also mounted the um, probe wires, the uh, clip-on probe, those wires are mounted on the back here too. But I'm going to put 3 volts to it. So this is 3.0 volts. We can see the LED, brand new, but that LED lights up. And we can see it puts out about 338 volts or so across this capacitor. It's only rated at 300, but it's got a little bit extra in there. And it looks like to be a 2 microfarad cap here. And uh, yeah, seems to be working fine. So this oscillation in here and the transformer is doing its thing. Also one thing to note is uh, it takes a little while for that capacitor to get back down. So when you're, when you, if you're playing with one of these things and uh, you, it's got some voltage on it, don't get bit by uh, suddenly jumping in there as soon as you take the power off. Give this thing time to, to dissipate. 
So now for the test. Um, this is a current probe. I know the voltage through the plug wire, of course, is very high, but it really it's a. This is a current probe, and uh, it needs that little bit of uh, current back into the one transistor here to get it to shoot. So we can see that it's working fast as I can tap this 9 volt battery. So the current through this, and this is also to show you that it's not that 40 or so thousand volts through the um, plug wire that's making it do it. It's the, it's the changes in current that are making it do it. One thing I thought I'd show on the uh, clamp-on probe here, the, the current probe, is there's a U-shaped piece of ferrite in here that runs around this way and then up here there's another bar of ferrite that goes across there. You need to make sure that this thing, you don't clamp it down, you'll notice that it, it, it wiggles around a bit, this uh, clip-on right here, because these faces here need to land on these faces here. If you got a lot of dirt and crud in there, these might not be uh, getting a, a good flat surface to go against. So you can take a piece of paper here like this and put that in there, and uh, that should have some force coming, to take a bit of force to pull it out. It shouldn't just fall out of there, and same on this side over here. You should be able to stick that piece of paper in and just it should hold itself in place. You'll know that the surfaces are flat, so when you put this down you can see there's really no light even coming through there. It's just that flat. So now that we've shown that the thing works and uh, flashes the way it should, it's uh, worthwhile to go and clean all this stuff up and get some of that green gunk off of the off of the contacts and things like that. Also, I'm changing out all these wires as well because who knows how much water's gotten down into these guys and capillary action up in the water inside of here and what sort of shape this wire is internally. And uh, the wire that I've used uh, to replace this that you saw on the board already is just these ones from uh, computer uh, systems, you know, for plugging drives in and things like that and just use some of this wire. Works great. So I'm going to take a uh, buff or sand or whatever um, that I can have and uh, get some of these contacts to get them in better shape. So here it is all back together. We'll just give it a quick test on the 9-volt uh, battery here. It doesn't look like a lot on there, but it is. It's more than enough down in the engine compartment to, to see the, the timing marks. So looks like we're doing okay.